already 10 minutes in and I feel like I haven't covered anything. This video is gonna be so long. Today I'm finally talking about the epic orientation. I have my epic orientation book manual thing bob here with me. I'm actually not sure like how much we're allowed or not allowed to say about the orientation. I don't think anyone has told me I, there was anything I should not be talking about so I'm just gonna talk about whatever I want. And how I'm going to do this is basically I'll start with when I arrived <clears throat> and try to go in chronological order the best I can with like random information sprinkled in between. So before I begin, I'm just gonna remind everyone that my orientation was the August 2016 fall orientation. So honestly, things probably change every year. Just bear that in mind. I'm sure for the most part, the things will be pretty similar. Okay, so let me just go over some of the things I'm going to talk about today. I have my notes with me. First thing I'm actually gonna start with is jet lag. Um, in no particular order, I'm going to talk about the structure of orientation, what you do, what the schedule is like, um, the classes, what the classes were like, location for me, random details about orientation, kind of the rules, the health checkup, um, the lesson demos, very important, and that's about it. Okay, let's start. First thing, people ask me how jet lag was and how I fought jet lag. Our orientation started on August 18th. I flew out of Canada on August 16th. The flight is about 17 hours. And my flight out of Canada was around 11, 12, I think. My tactic was to <clears throat> sleep minimally on the airplane so that when I arrived in Korea in the evening, I would be able to sleep relatively early and sleep through the night. So I think that's the main trick is to not sleep too much on the airplane if you have a similar flight time as I did. Uh, so that helped a lot, I think. Some people arrive the day of at the airport and then they go straight on the shuttle bus to the orientation center. Whereas I and lots of other people opted to come in a night early at our own expense. And some people even came a few days earlier. So it's up to you, but it was really nice to just be able to arrive in Korea and not be like, go, 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 and just kind of have some time to process and decompress before going to orientation. Oh, uh, my orientation was at in Busan. So I know there's two other orientations. During our intake, it was, there was another one in Daejeon and I forget where the last one was, but I think Busan is the biggest one. We had like over 300 people at our orientation. It was definitely a very nice location, <laughs> very nice views, great campus that you're staying at. Okay, orientation itself. To summarize it, it was amazing. I thought it was amazing. It was really fun. I think it was moderately helpful in terms of preparing you to be an epic teacher. Our orientation is about a week. Almost every day, you will have classes. How the classes are split up is based on where you're placed. So it's split up by POE, Provincial Office of Education, and MOE's Metropolitan Office of Education. So every class is generally one or two MOVs or POVs, and then within that, they split your cap class in half, class A, class B, just to make the sizes more manageable. Classes go from 9 a.m. to 5.20. There's breakfast buffet in the morning before 9 a.m., lunch buffet, and then dinner buffet. Let's see, we cover things such as lesson planning, English comprehension, after school and camp, curriculum, co-teaching, and these are all taught by either like former EPIC teachers or people that have been here for many years in the program for many years, associated with EPIC, so on and so forth. And starting from the second night, every night you have survival Korean class and that's basically, you take a little test test to figure out where your, your Korean level's at and then you get split into survival Korean. I think I was placed in like class four or something which basically I knew nothing. <laughs> Warning, we had Korean survival classes after dinner so at times, it was kind of like tedious to have to go back to class after dinner, but it ended up being fine. These classes are fun. They're pretty easy going. Don't worry too much about it. Part of orientation is really just kind of like your first week of university or college all over again. Second day, you do your medical checkup, right? Starting at 7 a.m. So some people go a little bit later, but they start at 7 a.m. Nothing to worry about. It's very straightforward. 
you line up by class, you go through each station, get your eyes checked, get your ears checked, get your blood pressure, your height, your weight, typical stuff, pee test for your drug test. Don't do drugs, don't do drugs. Nobody failed the results during our intake, so let's hope it stays that way for every intake. You have um, a whole day where you go on field trips, then you'll have the night to do whatever you want. Realistically speaking, you'll probably spend some of that time meeting your groups to do your lesson plans, which I'll also talk about later. Uh, and then another full day of classes, survival Korean. And then the next day after that, this is I think like the third last day now, you have classes. Um, and then you also have designated time to work on your lesson demo preparation with your groups. You will get placed into groups of two or three. Um, they do that for you. Um, there really isn't, like, as you could kind of tell, the schedule is pretty packed. You're kind of going from like, depending on what time you wake up, 7 a.m. to late at night. Especially if you want to go out after and after classes to like go to the Noribang and karaoke or go this, you know, take a walk, go to the bar. It's a long day. It's over 12 hour days and it's a lot of classes, a lot of back to back classes. So, um, what was I even talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, there's really not that much time to work on your lesson demo. It can get stressful when you think about it, but just don't panic too much. Ultimately, these lesson demos are not to um, not to judge you. It's more about just constructive criticism, um, sharing ideas with everyone else because you know you can share PowerPoints after you learn from other people's mistakes, and you can also take things you learn and apply it to your own teaching when you go and teach in your own schools. Try not to stress about it too much. Um, I would work on it as soon as possible. You know, don't go crazy. Get together with the group just to bounce around some ideas early on and then use up that time that they give you to work on your demos. And then the second last day, you are broken into your A and B classes and everyone has to present their lesson demo. And after that, you meet with your MOE, POE, sign your documents, you usually find out what school you're going to, what grades you're teaching, where you're not always where you're living. Depends where you're placed. Some people find out where they're living, other people still don't know. So it really depends on your MOE or POE. People in Chungju actually got an email maybe midway through orientation that told us exactly what city we were in, so we kind of knew already. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Honestly, the representative comes, you sign a few documents, look over your contract, and that's pretty much it. And then after that, you have the closing ceremony and farewell dinner. The last day, you are pretty much waking up, packing up, loading your luggage onto the vehicle, onto usually the coach bus, getting shipped to wherever you're going and being ripped apart from your friends and it's terrifying, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit terrifying. It's a real wild ride. It's, it's a lot happening in one week and one day. But don't worry, you'll be okay. That's, that's cute, I don't know. I must have been explaining to someone what the CN Tower is because I have a little sketch of the CN Tower in my, in my notebook. Interesting. Okay, so every class has two leaders. They're awesome, EPIC leaders are great. They work very hard to make this orientation useful for us and to run smoothly and they're all they're all awesome. I love the leaders. Definitely stay connected with them if you can, they're great. Mingling, okay. I mentioned before that orientation is a little bit like the first week of university. You have a cafeteria, you have dorms. Okay, let's talk about the dorms. You're placed into dorms. Girl section, boy section, you're separated. You can't go into each other's dorm building period it feels kind of funny being a full-grown adult to say like you can't go into the boys dorm but it's just for a week it's fine you also have a curfew curfew is at midnight so you have to be in your dorm by midnight obviously no drinking in the dorms you get placed with one other person so two people are sharing one room decided just based off who was standing next to each other in line and signing in and they just gave you the key cards it wasn't like there's no like algorithm to decide who you're rooming with. It can sometimes feel a little bit clicky. 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 However you say it. Um, you know, there's so many people at orientation. Like I said, we had like three, four hundred people. Groups are bound to form. People are gonna make their little groups of friends. And that's not to say that they're excluding anyone on purpose. It's just that groups of friends form. That's just naturally how it is when you have that many people. My best advice for that is to make sure that you expand outside of just your POE or MOE. So basically the people that you're having class with 
they're likely going to be people that you are closest to because you spend the most time with them try your best to make friends outside of that group because later on when you guys are all separated it's going to be nice to have friends that live in different cities and very different provinces so you can visit them honestly everyone you meet at orientation is just so great okay so food i feel like they kind of try to americanize it so it's not just a total shock to your body this korean food uh depending on where you're from maybe you're used to korean food maybe you're not maybe you've never had kimchi before and this is gonna be the time where you're gonna have to try it and just go in there expecting to eat korean food um i know some people that tummies didn't feel so great adjusting I feel like that's just a part of moving to a new country with the jet lag and the nerves and the new food. You're gonna have to adjust. Got a lube. I don't know why when I start talking, I sound like this. Like, why? It's like I'm straining to talk. Uh, okay, so there is Wi Fi, at least at the orientation center that I went to. Uh, not in the rooms, not in the dorm rooms, that you'll have to set up cabled internet to your laptop but in the main lobby area there will be free Wi-Fi it's not always the best because there's hundreds of people trying to connect at once but um, you know it totally does a trick when you get there everyone's going to want to message back home, message their friends which is very expected so I mean the internet does slow down a little bit but at the same time I would say be in the moment the best you can honestly the week goes by so fast you don't want to spend your entire time just like on your phone i probably spend a lot of time on my phone but <laughs> my advice is not to you have plenty of time to do that when you're all alone in your little apartment trust me one of the things i say is just overcompensate if you're shy overcompensate walk around like you own the place like you're i mean given if you're all the way in korea you can only probably be so shy considering you're doing and going through such an amazing experience that takes a lot of balls in my opinion but you know some of us are still shy as people or perhaps a little bit introverted which is completely normal so um overcompensate just just walk around there like you own it like you're ready to do this like you're ready to go be friends with every single freaking person there that's what that's what i did you're either going to be going in for the fall intake or going in for the spring intake since i was going in for the fall intake i went in august and it was bloody hot so, and it was apparently the hottest summer ever in Korea while we were there. Gosh. And you're trying to wear like, you know, a suit or something and you're like sweat balls. Just, you, honestly, you just gotta deal with it. Wear business casual, wear smart clothes, don't wear spaghetti straps, don't show your shoulders. You know, try not to show too much leg. Okay, I'm just gonna freeze on my ugly little face here for a second because I realized that my camera didn't record a huge chunk of what I was saying for a while. Basically, I was saying that you should try to pack all the things that you need for orientation into either one suitcase, such as your carry-on, or into at least one section of your suitcase just to make it easier. If you guys want to see what my dorm actually looked like, oh, I did like a mini tour within the vlog that I posted. I'll post the link below, and you guys can watch my epic orientation video. Uh, gosh, I hope I covered enough. Or enough to make this video somewhat useful to you guys uh, if there's anything I didn't cover that you would like to know more about leave a comment below and I will get back to you I think that's everything I personally loved orientation so I really hope all of you do too make the most out of it whichever way you can and just try to enjoy the experience you know it's overwhelming but it's also just such an amazing experience at the same time so good luck everybody enjoy orientation and I'll see you in my next video